Hi everyone, welcome to the May Garden Tour. Now I know we just did a tour a couple of weeks ago, but I wanted to get out here and do another one because I've got a lot planted in the garden in the past couple of weeks. A lot of the flowers are starting to fade. I've pulled some out and planted a lot of my warm weather crops. So really the garden is in a state of transition. So right here on the top, this was filled with nasturtiums and all kinds of flowers um, up until about a week ago. And I've pulled them out and I've planted some tomatoes. So I am so excited to have tomatoes in the ground, you guys. I cannot wait for the fresh taste of homegrown tomatoes again. So right here at the very start of the garden bed, I've planted two compact varieties of tomatoes. These are one of my favorite small tomatoes. They're, they are called the Yellow Patio Choice Tomato. They're an All America Selections winner. They're very productive, super juicy. Yellow tomatoes are always so sweet, and I cannot wait to harvest these. Now I popped into uh, garden center tomato cages right here and I really like these. They're nice and bright at a nice cheery touch to the garden and they'll actually be perfect for these small compact tomatoes because the tomatoes are smaller so they'll really fill out these tomato cages nicely but won't get overgrown. Another reason why I put smaller tomatoes here in this upper garden bed is because it gets a lot of shade and small tomatoes will ripen with much less sunlight than great big huge tomatoes. So we've got two patio choice because I really love those. And then right next to it here, we do have some peas that are still hanging on. But what I went ahead and did is planted a tomato in the middle of this trellis just to get it going. And that way, once the peas die out as the weather gets warmer, we've got a tomato here already established, ready to take its place. And I believe this one is the um, red cherry tomato from the tomato seed collection. And you can see here, I actually have two different tomato plants in. I planted the peat pellets. I happen to have two different seedlings. So we'll see how it goes here. I may end up snipping the uh, strongest seedling as it grows and then cloning um, the second seedling and starting a new plant. So hopefully you guys were able to catch my cloning video. It's so easy to root and clone tomato plants. You got to try it. Now I have started pulling out a lot of the poppies that are drying up, but the fun thing is there's a lot of other warm weather flowers coming up to take its place. So we've got some other types of poppies coming in here. These are so pretty. I absolutely love these red poppies. They are beautiful and make such a nice color pop in the garden. Now you'll notice even Callie Kim has weeds. <laughs> I've got some weeds in here that I'm going to be pulling out, planting some more wildflower seeds. There are some wildflowers, those pink flowers starting to come up, but we'll get some more seeds planted. And as the weather gets warm, the wildflowers will be absolutely stunning. I might even plant a border of sunflowers right here along the fence. So let me know what you think about that. Now, a couple tomato cages that I've been trying out for the very first time that I'm really excited about. Gardener Supply sent me these brand new Vertex tomato cages. They're brand new to Gardener Supply and brand new to me too. And I'm really liking the look and the feel of them. They're super sturdy, very heavy weight. And one thing I really like about them is that they kind of sway with the wind, but they don't topple over. So here on my windy hill, these are gonna do really well. Now this is the tall cage. I think it's about six feet tall. And I have a yellow brandywine tomato planted in it, which is a very large, heavy tomato. So I'm really looking forward to having this cage support that tomato. And the one right here behind me is the smaller version and this one's about three feet tall. I've got a homestead tomato in here, which probably this cage won't quite be tall enough for the homestead tomato. So you can see I've put another uh, bamboo pole in here to help support the homestead tomato as it grows. And Gardeners has been so generous to offer my viewers a discount code on these. You can enter the code Cali Kim when you purchase these at gardeners.com and with a $50 purchase, you'll get 10% off. So I thought that was really nice of them to offer that discount code as well. And I'll pop links in the video description for these also, but I'm really loving them so far. So I am super excited to have the tomatoes planted. I'm definitely going to be planting more, but this is a great start. Now, you might notice that I haven't pulled everything out in this garden bed. Because we grow year-round here in California, what I usually do is just clear out areas where I can tuck in plants and leave the plants in that are still growing. So these poppies actually popped up since our last video and they're actually on the north side of the garden bed, which means they're not going to shade out the tomatoes right here in these cages. So I can't wait to see them bloom. 
my favorite color here. It's just a beautiful blanket of poppies right here in this area, it's so pretty. Now you can see there's still plenty of nasturtiums right behind me here. So I've just kind of been pulling them out as, they, as they've been drying up, but they, they still look really pretty and hopefully they'll last a little bit longer. Well, right here in this tomato cage is still hanging on the sugar and sugar snap peas from the spring garden seed collection. This plant has been going absolutely crazy. I've harvested it several times and it just won't stop. We have had a couple of days in the 80s, a couple of days even up to 90, and this plant is still going strong. So I'm really glad that it's still producing lots and lots of very sweet sugar snap peas. So if you're looking for a productive variety of pea, the Sugar Ann is definitely the way to go. And again, All America Selections winner. So the All America Selections winners are always very productive plants. Now, something you might um, notice on your pea plants as the weather gets warmer is they will start to dry up from the bottom. So don't be alarmed about that. It's just their way of saying they pretty much run their course and they're just about done for the season. So you notice the leaves are all dry on the bottom, kind of yellowing. There may even be some spots of powdery mildew in here. Yes, we do have some powdery mildew. We have had a really wet winter and a couple of rainy days this spring. So I would imagine in a couple of weeks time, I'll be pulling this plant out. And just so I had something else growing, I did pop some other plants in this tomato cage that we will be all ready to go when these plants are done. So I actually popped in here some of my um, butternut squash and I think I might even have a spaghetti squash plant in there. And I don't expect to see a whole lot of growth from these. Um, this the past few weeks, the weather has been in the 60s, so I wouldn't expect to see a lot of growth until the weather gets in the 70s and 80s. I'm able to pull these plants out and it gets a lot more sun. So don't feel like you have to clean out your garden beds all at once. Just do a little bit at a time as you have the chance to get it done. Another thing I did here in this garden bed that I think will be really pretty is I planted some of the scalloped squash. Um, right on the edge of the garden bed and that way when the nasturtiums right here are all done I'm hoping that the scallop squash will kind of spill over the edge of the garden bed and look really pretty here too. I love the scallop squash. It's um, in my squash seed collection. It's a small little squash with really pretty scalloped edges and it looks really nice when you slice it and then pop it on the grill. It's really really tender too. Now I showed this garden bed on my coffee walk video the other day, but I just want to talk a little bit about these love and a mist flowers. These flowers bloom every spring and reseed. I believe I got the seed several years ago from Baker Creek Seed Company. They are such a beautiful, deli delicate flower in white and purple. Sometimes there's even little pink ones that bloom. They're a really beautiful springtime flower. And the cool thing is, once the flowers dry up, they have little seed pods that you can save the seeds for next year. But what I found is that they pretty much just reseed themselves all over the garden. And because we had such a wet winter, they're just going crazy everywhere and I'm absolutely loving them. And right here behind the love and the mist, I tucked in some cucumber plants and I decided to plant them here because it does get a little bit of afternoon shade, which cucumbers really seem to do well in the hot weather when they have a little bit of afternoon shade. So I've got about eight plants here. And as I mentioned on my coffee walk video, somehow this plant got pulled out. I'm not quite sure how, maybe our little resident bunny. So I don't think it was Mac. So I haven't quite got to this garden bed yet. The nasturtiums are really starting to dry up here. And so I will be pulling them out probably in the next week or so. You can see how the flowers are just starting to dry up. There's tons and tons of seed pods on here. You can see all these green seed pods. Those will eventually turn brown and then reseed themselves all throughout this garden bed. I'm not sure what I'm going to do here yet, if I'm going to do tomatoes or squash. I do like the look of squash kind of cascading over the stone walls. And I believe I planted tomatoes in here last year. So it might be nice to kind of switch it up a little bit. Tomatoes, it's always good if you can kind of rotate your crops. Sometimes the diseases stay in the soil and that way you don't have diseases from year to year. Or at least it helps cut back on them. Now I did want to show you these two garden beds here because we planted some of these vegetables out just a couple of weeks ago and you guys saw the planting tomatoes on the spring garden series. Wow, they are really starting to take off and really grow. Let me just show you guys here this Marglobe tomato 
has really taken off in the past couple of weeks. There are several little blooms on here, so I'm really looking forward to the tomatoes starting to form. It's always so much fun to come out every day and just check and see the growth. That's one reason why I love taking my little coffee walks. And here you can see the bright green foliage. That's brand new growth. This tomato is in its sweet spot here. Now, if you'll notice at the very bottom of the plant, there is a branch here I noticed that is has brown spots and is starting to yellow. And I do like to pinch these off because usually a spotted or yellow leaf is a sign of some type of disease. So I keep all the yellow leaves pinched off. So it's really important you come out and check your plants daily to make sure there's not any problems going on. So we'll pinch this off and I'm not gonna put it in the compost pile because I don't wanna spread disease to the rest of the garden. Now, I've had a lot of questions actually about the Marglobe tomato. It is a determinate tomato plant, which means that a determinate tomato grows to a set height and then produces all of its tomatoes at once and then dies. However, from everything I've been reading, the Mara Globe does produce more like an indeterminate plant. It produces over a little bit longer of a growing season, and it grows much taller than typical determinate tomatoes. But determinate tomatoes you typically don't prune, so I'm not going to heavily prune this plant, except when it has those yellowing or brown leaves. Now, one thing I am loving about this cooler weather the past few weeks is the lettuce. It started to bolt, but now it's looking really good. This is the red romaine lettuce. It's in my lettuce seed collection and also in the spring garden seed collection. And the color of these leaves and the size of these plants is absolutely fantastic. So I'm just gonna harvest a couple and we're gonna take it inside tonight and have it for dinner. And I think we have signs of our bunny here nibbling on the leaves. It's the first year we've really had bunnies eating our vegetables. So if you guys think this is a bunny, let me know. And right next to the red romaine here is some of the black seeded Simpson and some more red romaine. And these are still little baby leaves, but you can still harvest lettuce when it's nice and small. It's very, very sweet this way and absolutely delicious. The borage flowers over here are absolutely beautiful. In fact, did you know that these flowers are also edible? I made a watermelon and blueberry salad last week and sprinkled these flowers on top and it was so, so pretty. I took it to a party and everybody absolutely loved it. Now this plant here was the very first tomato plant that I put in the ground maybe six weeks or so ago. And the exciting thing is I already have some really nice sized tomatoes. So I'm pretty sure this is the Marglobe tomato. <laughs> but of course I didn't label it, but I'm pretty sure it's Marglobe. Look at those gorgeous tomatoes, guys. I can't wait to pick them. With a little bit of sunshine, we should be pick picking these within, I don't know, maybe a month or so. Now you right, might remember on the cloning video tomato, now you might remember on the cloning tomato video, I did take a cutting from the lower um, branches here. And that cutting is rooting very nicely on my windowsill in the kitchen. And I'll be planting that out pretty soon in the garden. You guys definitely wanna go back and watch the planting tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and squash video from a few weeks ago. And you will see the incredible growth on this squash plant. This is the Crookneck squash from the Spring Garden Seed Collection. It has really grown by leaps and bounds in the, in the last few weeks. And there's some little flowers developing in the center there, which means that the squash will be developing very soon. So I am trying something a little bit different in the veggie pod. I pulled out the lettuces that were in here and actually transplanted them into another part of the garden. And I'm trying some squash in here. I've never done that in the veggie pod before, but I thought it would be kind of fun to see the squash kind of spilling over the sides. So the lettuce was just kind of getting a little bit toasty in here and I don't have the shade cover on for the veggie pod yet. So, so I thought I would pop the squash in here and see how it does. So I'll definitely keep you guys posted on my little experiment here. Now you might remember from the herb garden video over the weekend, we planted some cilantro and I mentioned that cilantro bolts very easily. And here is a perfect case in point. This cilantro has been in this container, I want to say for maybe three months or so, I planted it from seed. And due to a couple of hot days, it is already bolting here. And you can see how the leaves, here's the cilantro leaves that you would use for herbs at the bottom. And you can see how as it bolts, it shoots up this tall stalk 
and the look of the leaves kind of changes into this feathery look, which will eventually bloom into flowers. Now the pollinators absolutely love the flowers, so I'd really encourage you to leave a couple of the cilantro plants in if they bolt. And when the seeds dry up, the flowers dry up, you can harvest the seeds and plant them again, or use them for coriander in recipes. They're really very tasty. Now here in this Smart Pots long raised bed, I have still have some cool weather vegetables and also some tomatoes planted. Now guys, I was planning on harvesting some of this broccoli today and I see here our Mr. Bunny has been at work again. This was a full head of broccoli and nice big broccoli leaves yesterday and I guess our bunny likes broccoli. So I'm, I am gonna leave this plant in though because a lot of times broccoli will grow side shoots once you harvest the broccoli head. However, right next to it here, fortunately I have another broccoli plant here and the bunny didn't get to that one, thank goodness. So I am really looking forward to throwing this on our salad tonight. It's gonna be so, so tasty. Isn't that beautiful? And you can harvest broccoli while the heads here are actually little flowers while they're still nice and tight before the florets open up and start to bloom. Now broccoli is a cool weather vegetable, so it usually will start to bloom once the temperatures get over 80 degrees. So I'm really thankful to have this one little head of broccoli. So I am really thankful to have this one little head of broccoli. So we've got a couple different types of tomatoes in here. We've got another Marglobe plant and my favorite little dwarf tomato, the Tiny Tim. This plant is going crazy. It has tons and tons of flowers on it. Lots of little tomatoes. Looks like we got one there we can harvest. And oh, something interesting going on here is, you see those little black droppings in there? That's the sign of some kind of bug leaving its droppings on this plant. So what I need to do is get out here and inspect it very carefully, maybe spray the plant down with water just to knock the bugs off. And if that doesn't help, I'll be spraying this plant down with some neem, neem oil because I definitely uh, don't want any bugs getting to my tiny tims. Well, the scarlet runner beans are growing by leaps and bounds. Every day I come out here, they're, they've grown higher up. And I just noticed today, right when I walked in, that there's my first little scarlet runner bean. So I'm very excited about that. These beans are so, so tender. Absolutely one of the most delicious beans I've ever had. And the seeds are beautiful. You have to go back and watch my coffee walk video from last week see the beautiful bean seeds. They're, these are in my bean seed collection, one of my favorite plants to grow so far this year. And the cool thing about this trellis is, it's tall enough, they're gonna climb all the way up and probably over the trellis, maybe even all the way down to the bottom, I'm not sure, we'll have to see how they do. I've got peas here on the other side, which are kind of coming to the end of their days. Definitely got some powdery mildew going on and you can see how the peas are drying from the bottom up. So these peas probably won't last much longer, but that's okay. We'll pop some other warm weather vegetables in here to take their place. Something I'm very excited about, one of my favorite flowers, the sunflowers. You can see here, they're forming some really beautiful large buds here and I'm really looking forward to these blooming. I absolutely love sunflowers and these are volunteers they came up from last year but i do have a sunflower seed collection if you're interested in growing them with five different varieties and they make your garden absolutely pop and scream summer they're so much fun one of my jobs for this week was to get this planter filled with peppers so i'm really excited i've got a lot of pepper seedlings in here and you guys saw all these seedlings on my live stream last week they were all in jiffy peat pellets in a little tray and one of my goals was to get them in here so i'm very glad that i was able to get that accomplished this week well i pruned back the blackberries a little bit late but i got them pruned a few weeks ago and they are just going crazy i'm really looking forward to blackberries this year you can see there's some blooms coming out but there's tons and tons of new growth. So I'm anticipating a really good crop this year, hopefully my best one yet. Well, my garden is definitely a work in progress and I haven't done a lot with this garden bed yet. You can see it's looking pretty overgrown and kind of a mess. I'm almost embarrassed to show it to you, but my plans for this are to clean out and trim up some of this overgrowth, plant probably some tomatoes and some climbing squash, and definitely clean up the strawberry crate towers. I'm probably going to be dividing some of the strawberry plants and maybe even redoing these towers. So you definitely want to stay tuned for a video on that. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed the May Garden Tour. I hope it encourages you to get out in your garden and get some vegetables planted. If you need seeds, head to my website, pick up the Spring Garden Seed Collection or any of my seed collections, get outside and get some seeds planted. You're gonna love it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.